Hi Bobcats, in this video we're going to take a look at um, the acid-base neutralization reaction and hopefully by the time we're done with this video you will be able to write a balanced chemical equation for the neutralization reaction. The overall pattern for an acid-base neutralization reaction is that an acid reacts with a base to produce a salt and water. So in this uh, particular chemical reaction that's shown here, our acid is HCl, our base is NaOH, and then the uh, salt produced is NaCl, and then of course there's water. Now, when we write these balanced chemical equations, it doesn't matter which reactant we list first. So we also could have written the left-hand side of this equation as HCl plus NaOH. And again, on the product side, it doesn't matter which you write first. You could have written water first and then salt. However, it is really important in these compounds that you always write the positive part of the compound first. So just to kind of illustrate some of this, let's look at the charges on these species. Sodium is in group one, and so it has a plus one charge. Hydroxide is one of those polyatomic ions. It's a minus one. Hydrogen ion is also in group one, and it's a plus one. Chlorine is in group 17, and everybody in that column, all of those halogens go minus one. And so then over here again, sodium's plus, CL's minus, and then water. You're going to actually see me in the next couple of slides write water as HOH. This is trying to illustrate the fact that part of the water molecule came from an H plus ion and part of it came from an OH minus ion when those two things reacted. Now the pattern that's followed here in this reaction is that when you look at those two ionic compounds on the left hand side, the reactant side, they're going to swap partners. To be neutral, we still need to have a positive piece and a negative piece in our product molecules. So what will happen is they, it's like square dancing. They just swap partners. So sodium looks for the only other negative thing that's out there, which is the chloride ion. They pair up, and that combination of the sodium ion and the chloride ion is where the sodium chloride comes from. And then um, the other thing that pairs up is the uh, hydrogen ion from the acid and the hydroxide ion from the base. And that is where the uh, water molecule is coming from. This slide contains several examples of these neutralization reactions, and I'd like to work through these with you. In this first example, we have nitric acid, HNO3, reacting with barium hydroxide, and they're going to swap partners. So hydrogen ion is a plus one. Nitrate is one of those polyatomic ions we memorized. It's a minus one. Barium is in group two, the alkaline earths, so it'll have a plus two charge, and then hydroxide has a minus one charge, and we're just going to swap partners. The hydrogen ion is going to pair up with the hydroxide ion, and that's going to give us an H plus and an OH minus, or H2O. Notice that the plus one and the minus one cancel out. So when we write the formula for this product, it's just HOH or H2O. The subscript of two over on the hydroxide ion and barium hydroxide does not come over. The subscripts are written to get charge balance within a formula, and one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion is already nicely balanced. The other product of this reaction will be from the combination of the nitrate ion with the barium ion. And when we write the product, the positive part has to go first. So we're going to write barium first. And barium has a plus two charge because it's an alkaline earth. And then the nitrate ion is one of the polyatomic ions we memorized. And it has a minus one charge. Now, to figure out our correct subscripts, we have to look at charge balance. Barium's plus two and nitrate is minus one. So we're going to need to crisscross because these charges don't cancel out. And when you crisscross with polyatomics, you have to put the polyatomic ion in parentheses. So this two will come down outside of the parentheses on nitrate and the one comes down on barium. 
So to just clean up and simplify that a little bit, we have HOH, or you can write that as H2O if you prefer, plus BANO3, two. However, it's not balanced. We have two nitrates on the right-hand side, but there's only one on the left. So I'm going to put a coefficient of two out in front of nitric acid. That's going to give me two nitrates on both sides, but also messed up the hydrogens. It now says that we have two hydrogens. For balancing, I'm going to treat the hydrogen and the hydroxide as separate things. So I'm only looking at the hydrogen ions right now, so I need a coefficient of two out front to balance that. That also means that I now have two hydroxides on the product side, and look at that over here on the reactant side. I also have two hydroxides. So now, with that coefficient of two in front of water, this equation is balanced, that and the two in front of nitric acid. For our second example reaction, we have HBr, hydrobromic acid, reacting with potassium hydroxide. Hydrogen ion is always plus one. Bromide's in the halogen, so it's minus one. Uh, potassium is an alkali metal. Group one, it's plus one. And hydroxide is minus one. When these guys go to swap partners, hydrogen pairs up with hydroxide. And so that's going to give us an H plus one and an OH minus one. The charges cancel out, so we don't need any additional subscripts. And then we're going to react, uh, or we're going to produce uh, potassium ion. The positive part has to go first with bromide ion. And there we've got a plus one and a minus one. They cancel out. So KBr is the correct formula. Then if you look closely, we have one of each and every ion. So this equation is one of those lucky ones that is balanced as written. And whoops, I realized I didn't make my little brackets down here to show the potassium ion pairing up with bromide. Okay, in our third and final example, we have the uh, sulfuric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. The hydrogen ion is a plus one. Sulfate ion is one of those polyatomic ions we memorized and its charge is minus two. Sodium is plus one and hydroxide is minus one. When the hydrogen ion pairs up with hydroxide, surprise, surprise, we're gonna get HOH again just like we did the, in the previous two examples. Then when the sodium ion pairs up with the sulfate ion, well, sodium has a charge of plus one, while sulfate has a charge of minus two. Those charges don't cancel out, and so we're going to have to crisscross. So we're going to bring that charge of two down on the sodium. With the polyatomic ion sulfate, we're going to bring down the one. So cleaning that up a little bit, we're going to have HOH plus Na2SO4 for our products. Now we're showing two sodiums on the right, but only one on the left. So I'm going to cram in a coefficient of two. That uh, generates two hydroxides on the left, so I'll need to put a two in front of HOH on the right to get two of those hydroxide ions. That gives me two hydrogens, and that works out perfectly because over here on our reactant side, we have two hydrogens. Our goal for this video was to write a balanced chemical equation for an acid-base neutralization reaction. Uh, they're going to follow a pattern in which the acid and the base are treated as ionic compounds that simply swap partners. The product molecules still need to have one positive ion and one negative ion. And then you, you'll need to use um, the concept of charge balance to figure out what subscripts to write in the formulas for the products. And then you have to throw in coefficients to balance the chemical equation.